Now, it's been reported that Harry and Meghan are angry that their children, Archie and Lilibet, will not be granted his or her Royal Highness titles when their children are appointed Prince and Princess by King Charles III. The new king has agreed to issue a letters patent to grant the children Prince and Princess titles, but will not grant them HRH state status as their parents stopped using HRH after stepping down as senior working royals back in 2020. Further questions have been raised on whether the Queen's death has also also led to an increase in racial abuse and tensions. This is something that Rakiba San, who will now be joining us, has looked into a bit. Uh, social policy analyst Dr. Rakiba San, thank you very much for joining me on the show this afternoon. Now, before we get into the HRH titles, this is something that I have found concerning. There seems to be a minority held view uh, that the monarchy as an institution and also the individuals in the royal family alienate those of different races and different religious faiths in this country. Well, Emily, I think that's not the case at all. I think you'll find that that traditional triad of faith, family and flag is well and truly alive in many ethnic minority communities across the country. Uh, for example, my hometown of Luton, um, during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, there was union flag bunting all over the town. And I think that it's really important to understand the traditional values which are held in many ethnic minority communities. And that was precisely why uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was appreciated the way she was across a range of ethnic and racial groups. So I do feel people who are suggesting that there's been a great deal of racial abuse, um, that the, the existence of the royal family is alienating for ethnic, is, it alienates ethnic minority communities. I simply don't think that's the case at all, Emily. I think in an age um, where secular liberal individualism has really gained a foothold, I think that the Her Majesty's uh, emphasis on the family values, the comfort of community. I think that that really resonated with many, uh, how do you say, social traditionalists in ethnic minority communities. Yes, I think for the vast majority of people in this country, whatever faith, whatever creed, whatever race, whatever mm. ethnicity, uh, the monarchy is something that they can be proud of. Um, as being part of being British, fundamental to their identity as being British. However, there is a minority held view, is there not? I saw a columnist, and I think it's something that you also shared on your social mm. media account as well, a columnist who uh, claims that the Queen's death has unleashed a torrent of racist abuse. Is there evidence to back up that claim? It sounds wildly um, exaggerated. Well, for me, Emily, it sounds like the creation of a parallel reality, uh, if, if, if truth be told. Her, Her Majesty was a national symbol of unity and constance, uh, constancy. And I do feel that when you're looking at those kinds of articles, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not driven by evidence in any way, shape or form. I think when you're looking at those uh, long queues to see the Queen's lying in state, as you say, it, it covers a range of racial, ethnic and religious groups. But uh, Her, Her Majesty's emphasis on faith, uh, pe people, people will say because she was a defender of the faith, uh, the, the head of the Church of England, that may alienate or marginalise non-Christian minorities, but that's not the case at all. I think her devotion to faith, um, her commitment to interfaith cohesion in modern day Britain she won over many people um, in non-Christian minorities. And you saw um, in during her Golden Jubilee tour, she visited a variety of places of worship. And that was something mm -hmm. which meant that she gained even more respect uh, within those communities that we're referring to. And Rakib, we also saw King Charles, uh, the new monarch, um, he said it was his personal duty to protect the diversity of our country. Mm -hmm. And that was in a speech to more than... 30 faith leaders from various religions, and that was at a reception in Buckingham Palace. The king is very aware of the fact that we no longer live in a homogenous society, that we have a mm. multiracial, um, multi-faith uh, uh, country, multi and he yeah. wants to make sure uh, that we are cohesive. Absolutely. I think that the, the, the statement uh, made by King Charles III, it does reflect that we are an advanced multi-faith democracy and that the royal family has played a great role in fostering that over decades. 
uh, Her Majesty did a great deal of work in terms of encouraging interfaith dialogue, uh, really emphasising those values of civic duty, public service, social responsibility that can bring that can bring together, um, tie together uh, a variety of faith groups. And I think that uh, King Charles III, he understands that th 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 there is there is somewhat of a need uh, for a figurehead. That you know, when we're talking about that, we live in an era of materialistic individualism. Um, that sort of devil take the hindmost materialistic individualism, and that he's there really talking about those. You know, the the, the value, the security and stability that can come with family, and um, the neighbourliness of community, and that the the kind of optimism and resilience that can come from having a strong sense of faith, that, that, that those are things that can tie uh, together a variety of groups mm -hmm. in our multi-faith democracy. So I think it's really, I, th I, th I think it's really pleasing to see that from um, King Charles III. Yeah, definitely. And it does seem to me that, unfortunately, we have some people in this country who like to focus on what makes us different. Um, whether that be mm. ra uh, based on our race or gender identity or whatnot, our faith. And the evidence doesn't show that most people feel these um, divisions. If you look at the Jubilee celebrations, for example, there were people of mm. all ethnicities and backgrounds waiting in the queue that's up on the screen here to see the Queen lying in state, see the Queen's coffin lying in state. Um, there are people from all different backgrounds, uh, people from different nationalities even, all there to pay their respects. I do feel like if we focus on divisions so much, we may well perpetuate them. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Emily. And I think that we really have to make the point that the values that Her Majesty embodied, they're, they're, they were shared um, by a, a variety of groups uh, living in modern day Britain. And I'd really make the point, to be honest, that the royal family does a great deal of good, not only domestically, but internationally as well. Indeed, Her Majesty uh, spearheaded that smooth transition from empire to commonwealth. And that was especially important, considering that many of our ethnic minority communities do originate from established members of the Commonwealth. I do feel that there are some people uh, I would consider to be radical anti-monarchists, um, sort of cultural liberals, who almost, use, at times, to be honest, Emily, they use ethnic minorities in their kind of pseudo-revolutionary games, um, it, calling for the royal family uh, uh, ultimately to be dismantled. Uh, and saying that this is something that would command a great deal of support in ethnic and racial minorities. But to be honest, the evidence uh, that currently exists tells me that that's not the case at all.